Mosaic artworks adorn brightly colored walls. Light streams into corridors and there's a sense of the outside emerging with the inside area. Most patients and staff members walking in the newly built Kailicha District Hospital find it very difficult to believe that this hospital is in the heart of one of the most impoverished areas in Cape Town. The, the province is charged with, 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 uh, care, uh, with public health in, uh, in, the, in the Western Cape. And the two new hospitals we've built at about 600 million each, Kailich and Mitchell's Plain, are the first hospitals built, new hospitals built in the province since 73 or 74, I'm not sure. And also these new hospitals are very beautiful. You know, they are really designed so that people will feel good in them and get better quickly in them. The driving force behind this innovative design is ACG Architects, who did extensive research on how to use design to enhance the healing process of patients. They were given a specific brief, and that was to design a state-of-the-art African hospital. So for me, the relevance to Africa was appreciating the lifestyle of people. Because when they come to a hospital, which is normally usually a very traumatic experience, one wants to give them an environment that they can relate to. So I felt it's very important that we, re we replicate that inside-outside relationship and experience. You know, when we designed this hospital, we were encouraged to design a very compact building that relied, la relied largely on vertical circulation. We, however, opted to emphasize horizontal circulation and keep it a fairly um, low-scale hospital. In fact, it's maximum three stories. ACG utilized a number of courtyards to merge the inside with the outside areas, as well as employed local artists to beautify these spaces. They maximized on-site views and natural light through the building orientation, and pushed for a greening hospital by implementing solar panels and two vertical axis wind turbines to reduce peak electric loads. Look, we opted for a very conventional form of construction for this, for this hospital. So what we have basically is a, a concrete frame structure, concrete slabs, and with brick infill and cladding. And we went this route because of the emphasis on the use of local labour. We, we had to tailor the construction methodology and systems to the level of skill which was prevalent in the community and which the contractor was able to enhance through his empowerment initiatives. Essentially, the materials used to complete the hospital needed to be carefully selected for its low toxicity and its impact on spreading diseases. During the construction phase, especially with the, with the infection control, um, after the plastering process, the walls had to dry out, you know, as the, 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 the plaster had to dry out, and then we, we, um, the, con the construction company um, then had getting, get a lab in to do the decontamination of the plaster walls before the paint was then applied to the wall, the primer and then the finished coats of paint. So yeah, there was a whole process in terms of um, infection control to make sure, and, and the paint that was applied to the walls also have got an antibacterial additive into it. So yeah, it was first decontamination and then the primer and then the finished coats of paint which then contains the antibacterial additive to it as well. Ultimately, this hospital will not only service almost half a million people, but it has also become an architectural work of art.